Hey, welcome to the Maybe You're Like Me podcast with me, Mike Burns. Listen, I know we're all more alike than we care to think. We've all got dreams, we've all got hopes, but sometimes we can feel a little alone trying to navigate in this crazy world we live in. So this podcast is all about you and it's all about me and how maybe we're a little more alike than we care to think. Welcome to Maybe You're Like Me. It is episode 20 of Maybe You're Like Me. It is our season finale, and I'm so happy you're here. We've got my wife, Katrina, and if it sounds like we're being a little silly, it's because we recorded this episode really late after a crazy day. And uh, also, if we sound like we're being a little quiet, it's because our boys are asleep upstairs. Listen, you're going to love this episode. It's such a fun way to close out season one of Maybe You're Like Me. Welcome, guys. Hey, babe, welcome back to Maybe You're Like Me. How are Yay! You? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm yep. very tired today. <laughs> Why are you tired today? I did a little tiny little itty bitty thing that's not a big deal. Oh yeah? Tell us about it. It was a little barely known super underground thing called the tough mutter <laughs> got you act roped like it's into like Fight it. Club, yeah. <laughs> but you did. First awesome. thing about tough mutter is we don't talk about tough mutter. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got roped into it by some pals, and it was really fun. But uh, it's tiring. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta do like, gotta crawl around in mud and run. But and let me go ahead and say this: your skin looks fantastic. I Have you did, been doing a, a mud treatment? I did get the spa treatment today. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I didn't know that was part of it, but my skin is muddied up. You're so muddy. Yeah. You're welcome. (laughs) So you earned being a little bit tired, but we're real proud of you. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So let's just get into this. Um, today's actually going to be a little bit of a shorter episode and, uh, it's weird and fun because it's actually the last episode. Um, it's the last episode of the season yeah it's fun it's crazy <laughs> last epi yep of the potty good nope <laughs> nope let's just go nobody ahead and ever start says potty. no one ever says potty and they really should p-o-d-d-y no that's not that's Old not a thing babe. body casty no Mm-mm, sorry <laughs> okay. for everyone listening out there i'm sorry already I this is not gonna get any about better. it <laughs> <laughs> TBH, this is probably not going to get any better with the what the mood Katrina's in right now. So this is how I behave when I'm tired. <laughs> oh, podcasty, everybody! <laughs> I actually remember uh, we had just gotten married and we were driving to our honeymoon. So we were mm-hmm. we started here in Lakeland and then we were driving to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we've been married all of twelve hours and <laughs> we were already taking our first road trip together. Hello, Governor. Yeah, and like. <laughs> before we'd even gotten out of the state of Florida, we'd already both gotten like slapstick silly and uh, <laughs> we're doing bits in the car and pretending we were British. So <laughs> that's a quick look into our marriage there. So yep, that's about how it goes. <laughs> and like for the last nine years, if like we're both like really tired, we'll just go pip pop. Pip pop cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So because this is the last episode of the season, uh, can you believe this is episode 20? That's wild. That's fun. It's you guys, um, he's not going to say it, but he works so hard and it's really hard to get the amount of people that he's gotten to commit to talking. And he's just like really crushed the game, reaching out to people he doesn't know, networking, scheduling and he's done it all on his own. So I, I want you to know that I am staring daggers at my wife right now. Why? Because I don't, I don't. Mm, oh. <laughs> and as your wife, I know how incredibly difficult it is for you to a reach out <laughs> B schedule <laughs> C uh, stick to the schedule. <laughs> I'm proud. All right. So we'll get to some of that stuff in a minute. Um, I hadn't actually told Katrina some of the game plan yet. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. So first, how how dare you of the day? 
Yeah. Um, not the first, how dare me of the day, but mm. moving on. Um, so let's do a quick first date round and I'm going to mm-hmm. ask you a couple of questions, um, that we've asked over the season. And I think people would just be interested in knowing what your answers. Some of these would are. They? Yeah. Yeah. They really would. <laughs> they get more interested in yours, but okay. Well, the thing that's fun is I think I've actually said all of mine. Okay. So, um, number one, what's something you get your body weight in? Um, hot tamales, the Ooh. candy, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not just a heated up tamale. <laughs> that would be pretty, actually that Although might be, that'd good. be pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But, um, it's also funny because you're allergic to hot tamales. Yes. So yeah, uh, it is what it is. You know, mm-hmm. you got it. Mm-hmm. I got to take one for the team. Then the team is me <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't affect anybody but me. So what if I can't close my mouth because it's swollen <laughs> for a day or two? It just is what it is. Okay. Aye, aye, aye. That's a very real look into our marriage. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, that's always like, it's in your Christmas stocking, it's in your yeah. Easter basket. And I know that I'm poisoning you yeah, as I'm yeah, getting actively. you your favorite candy. Yeah. Um, but I'm so happy. And that's, I don't know if I should put I'm that so on the podcast. Happy. It's an admission of guilt. If I you're happy. ever poisoned <laughs> by, uh, hot tamales, the, the police will come after me. Man. All right. So hot tamales is a good one. Mine yep. is still kettle corn. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. We've actually been in two situations recently where there's been kettle corn sellers, one at the Lakeland Christmas Parade, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which is a miracle that I have a voice right now because yeah, we were worried. I, I go all out at the Christmas Parade. He's the um, loudest person you've ever met. It's OK. Yeah. And then um, Christmas Parade. And then we were shopping uh, around that Black Friday and there was some kettle corn and it took all of me to not buy all of it. That was just a real lesson in self-control. Yeah. If, if you're looking for a role model, people, he's it. He's Mike it Burns is your you boy. Guys. All right. So, uh, yeah. So kettle corn still mine. Yours hot is hot tamales. tamales. Easy. Oh man. That's ridiculous. Um, all right. Number two. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this about you, but who was your first celebrity crush? Oh, uh, <laughs> this is from, this is going all the way back to episode one with Greg. Oh, uh, that, well, this is an easy one. A lot of the girls in my generation are going to be like, oh yeah, JTT, uh, yeah, Jonathan well, Taylor Thomas. I knew you were going Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. There was one point when we were, I think we were married. So that. you, uh, like I was already stuck and I couldn't. <laughs> couldn't be mad at you, but you made us watch. Uh, was it Jungle to Jungle? Is that the one he was in? No. Uh, oh goodness, I don't even remember off the top of my. Well, I mean, Home Improvement, the TV series. Yeah, calm Come down. On. And wow, then, wow. First you had a of all, crush on Young you asked Simba. This question. I know. I'm still allowed <laughs> to be upset about it. Well, who was yours? I don't remember. Act like oh, you don't know. Please. You know what? Well, let's not bring her up. We don't like her. I remember now. <laughs> she can go somewhere. Stupid. Pink Power Ranger. Uh, Nobody likes her. Everybody loves the Pink Power Ranger. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. And um, she's stupid. We hate her, right? It's actually funny because, like, so doing the podcast, I say random details about my life that are pretty, pretty interest, not interesting, but like, so my first crush was a Pink Power Ranger, and then Greg's was um, the the girl Roxanne from a Goofy movie, mm-hmm. and so like people just like come up and like. Mike, I love the Goofy movie too. Let's talk all about it. <laughs> and I've had so many more fun and different conversations with random people about things like a Goofy movie and Power Rangers and Amy Jo Johnson. Uh, um, no, we don't say her name. We, we say her name. Anyway, <laughs> it is fun because now it's like nostalgic. Like mm-hmm. it's just another level. Yeah. All right. But so we can go. Well, we could not. We can proceed without saying her name. <laughs> it's wow. very easy to do. I don't know you why said you keep JTT saying it. several times. He wow. must not be named. You said him. He's basically Voldemort right here. <laughs> um, all right. So one last one. And um, this is just a fun one, too. Uh, are there any American landmarks that you've never been to that you would want to go to? This is from the van episode. I van really want to see uh, the Grand Canyon. I've never seen it. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh is that, is that, that's considered a landmark, yeah. right? It's land mm-hmm. in the United States of Absolutely. America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the mark part, but there's I think probably, a dude named mark there's there. probably, yeah, 
Um, and <laughs> Mount Rushmore, but I mean, like, okay, I, so feel that, I feel like that would be probably pretty underwhelming, but I still need to see it. I, I've heard that. I don't know if it's underwhelming or just whelming, but I've heard that it's like, okay, I've seen that now. You want to know What's a cool next? fact about Mount Rushmore? I do want to know a great fact okay. about Mount Rushmore. So Mount Rushmore was originally supposed to have one other person on it. Ooh. And you'll never guess a million years who it was supposed to be. Uh, Willard Fillmore. Nope. Um, Howard Taft. Nope. Um, James Buchanan. <laughs> no, it was supposed to be Betsy Ross. Really? Can you believe that? I can. I mean, it's just mind blowing now looking back in history and thinking like that she doesn't fit the, she's not like fitting the vibe, but Listen. really, no, but I mean, it's presidents. That's, it, it, I don't know. She, Betsy Ross wasn't a president, but super cool. Lover. She's like soups rad in my book. Who, who was the like committee making that decision? I don't remember. And did they just run out of mountain? Was no, Lincoln's head too big? It, and no, they said, it, we can't do this. Yeah, wait. And then there's just like a very small statue of her on top that you have to really get up there to see. <laughs> she's, she's carved into George Washington's nose instead. Yes. And she's a booger. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> the, did you know, I watched a documentary about, uh, I believe it was Mount Rushmore recently and, um, using some historical clues, they actually found out that, oh gosh, that <laughs> the, there is an ancient buried treasure underneath Mount Rushmore. That's not Did true. you know that? Yeah. No, Were you watching national treasure, uh, national treasure Two book of secrets. Oh my gosh. It is a Get historical document here. and <laughs> there is treasure so there guys. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Betsy Ross, it was true. And the reason it didn't work out is because the, uh, the part of the stone she was going to be carved into, uh, wasn't, I don't know. There are a whole bunch of conditions and it wasn't in the proper condition. So they couldn't do it. Huh. Ah, was she going welcome. to be in the act of sewing the American flag? Uh, I don't know. I did not look up the uh, pictures of their whole plan. Um, mm. I will reach out to that committee yeah. that I'm best friends with. And Good old B Ross. Hey, can we get more B Ross? So B Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The grand Canyon sounds cool. I think that was my answer. Yeah. And I think I went once as a, a kid, kid, mm -hmm. but it doesn't count. I don't remember it at all. So yeah. uh, maybe we'll put that in our, our marriage bucket list. All right. Take our boys. Let's do it. Check out the old. Yeah. Once they're older, though, I don't trust uh, them. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to trust them anymore when they're older. They'll be like, Hey, I'm going to look over this cliff. Yeah. Mm. Let's not go. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, my son. No. no. Um, but yeah. So uh, those are both great choices. Proud Thank of you. you. Appreciate um, that. I think, yeah, outside of that, uh, is Alcatraz a, a national monument? I don't know, but I, I, I just want to see where the movie The Rock was shot. So, oh, yeah, that's anything Nicolas Cage at this point. Yes. <laughs> I'm just really catching on to a theme here. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a Nick Cage super fan on our hands. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it, but I'm going to be gone in 60 seconds. <laughs> Oh no, guys, I'm sorry. Let's, <laughs> it's okay if you need to turn this off. It's okay. Like I can totally get it. Uh, but before you go, a quick word from our sponsors, <laughs> Tough Mudder. No, sponsors, <laughs> Nick Cage. <laughs> What's the name of his new movie? I don't even know. It's like a fake documentary about it, him. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, Nicholas Cage, Uncaged, The yes. Beast. That's it. I don't know. I'm that doesn't sure sound it. right. I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. Um, so before you so rudely interrupted me earlier, How dare you? instead of doing the slow round today, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, I actually wanted to do uh, a personal quick, like introspective look back at uh, this last season. So um, noise. This whole season, I've been talking to a bunch of people, and uh, one of the things I've been asking them a lot is, uh, what are you learning right now? And so, number one, that's been really cool just to figure out what different people are learning and uh, things that they're trying to figure out. But uh, the guy last week we talked to named Tanner, he his whole thing was uh, gratefulness and thankfulness, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. which is a, a good, um, or I think he said gratitude, but... 
Um, the sure. Yeah. Sounds right. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to kind of look back at this season and just like through the eyes of gratefulness and thankfulness. And, um, you, you kind of misspoke earlier. I haven't done this alone. Like there's been a lot of it that, um, like I, I've put a lot of work into it and it's been a lot of fun, but there's been a bunch of people that, um, have been behind the scenes helping me and helping make this whole project happen. And the first one is you. And so, sorry, um, you handle compliments probably a little bit better than I do, but you have, (laughs) um, genuinely the podcast wouldn't be here without, um, you as a supportive wife helping me and making this happen. And so there's been times where I've had to leave the house at weird hours or edit things or, um, all of the above. And it would be really easy to be short and not understanding of this, but you've really been there for it the entire time. And I am super grateful for you being a big part of this. And I like you a lot. So thanks, babe. Oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few other people too. Um, my brother, Aaron has been a huge behind the scenes uh, person that helped uh, help me figure out like some of the technical side of this and uh, genuinely another person that the podcast wouldn't be here without. Um, if you like the way any of our graphics look, it's because Aaron helped me and um, helped just make this whole thing work out. And so Aaron, I think you're listening. Thank you, man. I love you. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina is currently being the weirdest, most tired hype man I've ever <laughs> met. <laughs> I'm yawning a lot. I'm sorry. She really is. She's rubbing her eyes. If you're watching this on YouTube. My eyes are definitely watery right now from all the yawning. Oh, there was one more, um, one more, uh, uh, question I wanted to ask you a first date question. Okay. And that was, uh, do you have a random collection of anything? Uh, yeah, I I collect salt and pepper shakers. Yeah, you do. It just turned into a thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're so cute. They are they're cute. They're little pairs. So if they're you're... Just, they're pairs. There's a one and a two. And they, they usually have a little theme. And they're just buddies. She and is so tired right now. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, it's not just one random little object on a shelf. It's always two. Because it's just a little buddy buddy system. And they just uh, make me really happy. So Look at them. again, if you Santa aren't watching, Claus. if you are not watching on YouTube right now, you're really missing out because if you look behind Katrina, you will see she's got a China cabinet full of like cool Christmassy stuff, but also a good amount of salt and pepper shakers. I had to put away so many of them mm-hmm. though to put all my Christmas stuff in there. Yeah. Don't have nearly enough Christmas ones, but this guy's new. He's like a little... Hims is a little car and Hims is just traveling with his little camper. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. This is, look at Santa and Mrs. Claus. They're, they're cute. They're so sweet. This is actually a salt and pepper shaker too, but you can't what? tell. Oh my mm-hmm. goodness gracious. The truck, the truck is like salt or pepper. And then the tree that the truck is carrying is also a shaker. Oh my goodness. You're welcome guys. There's the tour. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, (laughs) if you are listening, you are missing out because she just gave you a full audio visual tour of the old, uh, China cabinet right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, and, uh, for me, my favorite things, I don't even know how to describe them. Uh, My, my collection that I've got right now is those things you put in the window and then it like dances. Oh my God. I've got about 30 of those. It's those solar character guy, like yeah, people. I love them so much and I've got too many of them, but actually not, not enough. So Whatever. we've got a few more windowsills that I can fill them up oh with. Oh my gosh. So. <laughs> it's like the only Christmas decoration he puts out is when I bring out all the little solar people and there's like 20 of them and he puts them on the windowsills and they just like click back and forth all day. <laughs> I love they're, them. They're cute. Whatever. I'm not all buying right. them though. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, all right. So you have listened to all the episodes. We're back into the slow round stuff again. Um, is there anything that stuck out to you or anyone that stuck out to you or anything that that's happened on the podcast that you're like, that's actually really cool. That something that even you weren't expecting. Um, gosh, I have the memory of a goldfish. So that's (laughs) 
if it's not history related, it's <laughs> it's not there. No, I um I don't know. All the guests were so fun and kind and real. I really enjoyed um uh Sean of the South. Mm-hmm. I just think I always find uh so much or, or I guess I just found so much in him to relate to and to admire his story was just very compelling. And the fact that he walks in so much humility day after day and he just loves people and he loves joy and he doesn't take himself too seriously. And he finds like value in everybody in his intent. Like that to me, I was just like, that's something that I want to pursue personally. And I just, for not even knowing who he was before your podcast to learning his story. I was just like blown away by it. And then just full of admiration. I just, yeah, he's a cool dude. Yeah. So and I loved his wind chime. <laughs> his wind chime. I want to buy some wind chimes now. <laughs> right, right. The, um, that that's actually something I was thinking about the podcast too. So we started the season out with, uh, people that I had known for any period of time, just people that I had personal relationships with and off the, like the first thing with that is I'm so like lucky with how many cool people I know that are doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. So, um, people like, uh, Greg and bump and, uh, Sharon and Lance and all these people, David, Brianna, that, um, like they're genuinely out in the world creating and doing really cool mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. um, stuff that I admire and people have connected with. And so number one, it was cool doing that. But then number two, it was really cool getting to meet and find new friends and new people. And uh, a couple of the people like I've like kind of built like small relationships with, and, um, I'm hoping to bring them back on the podcast in the future mm-hmm just because they're genuine and good people. So people like Sean and uh, Kyle and Tanner last week, Mm -hmm. um, it's been a lot of fun just getting to meet and, and do new people or, uh, and interview new people. The, uh, like you said though, it was kind of scary and weird reaching out and finding people that I don't know. And, uh, when you've done anything with any level of popularity, it's easy to get a big head and, and not, uh, want to even talk to somebody, but I was so grateful for everybody who took a chance on me and on the podcast and said, yes. Yeah. And I just feel like it's a testament to how approachable you are as a person and how, um, I don't know. I just feel like you're gifted with, I I don't even know what, (laughs) what to call it, but it's just so easy for people to talk to you and to feel comfortable around you. And that is not something that everybody has Mm -hmm. because it comes so natural to you. You might think like it's not a big deal, but that is a very big deal and it is very cool. And people are drawn to you because of that. And I think like that is a testament to just who you are as a person, what your giftings look like and how, if you put your mind to it, people will be drawn to you and will love having a conversation with you. And I just think this has been the coolest outlet to show that aspect of you and to show, you know, me and everyone who's listening and hearing about the podcast, just like to see you shine. It's been really cool. Yeah. It's been fun. Um, some things I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to next season. Um, and, uh, for everyone who's, at home or in their cars, just weeping right now at the thought of the loss of this podcast oh, every so week. Sorry. Wow. That's, uh, this is just, I, I'm going to go ahead the and worst news of their lives. I think I'm going to go ahead and warn, uh, local and international. I'm going to call Interpol and be like, Hey guys, there's going to be a series of people who are uncontrollably wailing and crying. I think they call it the mourning period, you know, like back Mm -hmm. in the day, there was a whole grieving period Mm -hmm. and everybody were black. Mm -hmm. And that was the signal that they were in mourning. So I I think it's going to be at least this. This might be the saddest Christmas season to date. Of mourning? Um, Yeah. Just, okay. Um, yeah, people are just going to be wearing sackcloth and ashes and, <laughs> and crying in the streets and there's just, it's gnashing of teeth even. I don't know. This might get biblical. I Everybody's don't know. Everybody's just like really, uh, emo. 
all yeah. of a sudden. <laughs> Emo makes a comeback. Um, it was never a phase. It was never a phase. <laughs> <laughs> Emo's not dead. It's not. <laughs> it, it's, it's alive and strong. Um, but yeah, so I am, I'm looking forward to like what next, uh, what next style is on house to, I don't know what just happened in my mouth. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> so Vianna mock. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> that's one of his characters. Yeah. That's when I get retired. <laughs> the, um, uh, but no, I'm looking forward to what next season has to offer. And so, uh, I'm going to keep reaching out to old friends and new friends and, um, meeting people that are doing some crazy things. And then we're going to get Oprah on this podcast. <laughs> surprise you get an oprah you get an oprah i'm sorry that wasn't a good joke but it felt good i loved it it felt good to the, me yeah the uh next season is gonna be fun and i can't wait for you guys all to join us and uh one last thank you before uh we go to our sponsors uh gillette razors <laughs> if you notice i don't know um no uh one last uh thank you is for all of you who have been listening to this and sharing this it uh, when you put things out into the world, it's weird. And, um, but I see friends or I see people that I know and they're like, Mike, I just listened to this episode and it was so much fun. What you said about blah, blah, blah. Or, uh, it, it meant a lot to me that you asked this or whatever. And so I feel, I feel genuinely like blessed by how many people have come alongside this and listened. Um, and I just can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah. I think it's been so cool just observing people around reaching out to you and encouraging you and very like random all over the board people that, you know, you just wouldn't expect just so incredibly excited for you. And it's, it's been really cool and humbling. All right. Are you ready to make our big announcement too? Yeah. Uh, starting next week, Katrina has her very own podcast. No, I don't. <laughs> it's literally not happening. Uh, uh, I, okay, let's start a social campaign to get Katrina <laughs> to start her own podcast. I would love to. I just maybe like when I can figure out at when. <laughs> Plenty of time. Okay. You can uh, just quit working. And- oh, oh, money bags over here. Yep. <laughs> Um, old, old money bags, Mike. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I can't wait for that. What was the name of your podcast going to be again? <laughs> Things Katrina hates more than anything is being put on the spot like this. <laughs> and the face she is making. How dare you? <laughs> is that the name of the podcast? That's it. Yep. Hey. <laughs> How dare you with Katrina Burns? How dare you not know this? Ooh. No. Ooh, I like it. Uh, Yeah. Or uh, no, did you know it's too generic, but yeah. I like how dare you with Katrina Burns. So, um, and you can talk about like the bad guys in history and, Ooh. and them, them making a mess. Start mm. with uh, King George the sixth or oh, eighth. eighth. Gosh, yeah. I just, oh, that guy, he was so <laughs> grotesque. I just, I don't get it. All right, guys, here's what I'm going Grotesque. to do. I am going to take a microphone and just hide it in a room <laughs> and be like, hey, babe, uh, you know what I heard about King George the Eighth? I heard he was actually a pretty good guy. And then just record <laughs> the next 45 minutes. And then I'm going to be a, a pretty good guy. <laughs> and then Excuse the me? next week, I'm going to be like, hey, didn't you hear that Genghis Khan was actually a really good leader? And then. <laughs> I love this idea for us. I love this idea for you. And uh, yeah, so uh, we've got a few months and we're going to keep working on this and uh, making better and more and more content. So I'm excited. Thanks for joining us, guys. And we will see you next season on Maybe You're Like Me. Season two. Too fast. Or two maybe. (laughs) Two like me. (laughs) Oh, man. I lost it. Season two electric boogaloo. Season two, what up, boo? (laughs) (laughs) I I feel good about that. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think we're going to get a better ending than that. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Well, bye. Bye. (laughs)